Yo, what's going on everybody? My name is Braxophone, and it's been a little while. I had a little bit of a holiday break, but I'm back and I want to talk about Ganyu's best sets and best weapons because she is coming out relatively soon and we can get a lot of information from the video that they showed us, the version 1.2 special program. Uh, it does show a lot of her abilities and so without going over any leaks or spoiling any information, we can get a general idea of what's going to work well with Ganyu. First, we're going to watch through this a little bit. Um, just take a uh, select few clips and talk about what the ability these look like they're doing so that way you guys have an understanding of why we're going to run certain artifacts. All right, so here you can see there's a double charge shot, and this is actually something that's really important to discussing the sets because it looks like after you shoot the charge shot, it leaves an AoE behind, and that AoE does cryo damage. You can see that the slimes freeze here, which means that it is cryo, it is doing an ice AoE that is freezing all of the hydro slimes. This is going to be especially important to talk about when we do get around to Wanderer's Troop, I think, and we will talk about that in a little bit, so stay tuned or skip ahead in the video to the timestamp. So here it shows her spawning this kind of like ice flower and dashing away. A really cool animation, I'm really excited to play around with that and see what it actually is. It does look like it's dropping a taunt though, and the reason I say this is because you can see some Hillitrolls standing around just staring at it. It's kind of similar to what happens with Amber's Baron Bunny, and I think it's really important to note. You can see that it kind of blows up here with this little ice effect, and then it transitions. They really don't want to spoil too much of the character, but you can see that they just have a couple Hillitrolls standing there staring at it. And if it fits the theme of being better Amber, um, you will see here her elemental burst is similar to amber's arrow rain it drops icicles but it's in a massive aoe so i think that we can assume that the last one is a taunt just based on the fact that the hill turtles were standing staring on it and we can see that this aoe is similar to amber's as well a lot of people run amber as a burst dps or a burst support and i think that that's something that could also fit ganyu's niche um specifically because when they use amber as a burst support or a burst dps they're trying to get out as many arrow rains as they can the problem is that arrow rain is like fairly small whereas ganyu's ult does look really really big which means that if you can spam that as much as you can spam amber's arrow rain it could get you a lot of value and of course it is doing constant cryo damage uh, you can see the slimes freeze back there so obviously it is going to put out constant cryo there's a lot of cryo damage that goes out in ganyu's kit all right, so moving on to the actual artifact discussion, we're going to go just down the line of a couple artifacts that I think are going to be really good for her and a couple artifacts that I think may be overshadowed by other ones that I think a lot of people are going to assume are good. So uh, let's get into that. Just looking through, I think the one, the big one that everyone's wondering about is the Blizzard Strayer set. Obviously, a lot of people aren't running Cryo as much because there's just not a ton of Cryo characters, to be honest. But now more people are beginning to run it because the Blizzard Strayer set did come out and gave people a reason to run Cryo Resonance and Cryo Damage. So we are looking at a Set that is coming up a little bit in terms of usage and I do think that it won't be any exception for Ganyu. I think that the set's going to be amazing for Ganyu uh, and my reasoning for that is because you get the cryo damage bonus on your charge shot, the cryo damage bonus on your burst and on your elemental skill and a lot of characters have that sort of elemental damage buff from their artifacts that they choose to use but I think what's really important to note about this is that Ganyu does that cryo AoE after she shoots her initial arrow shot which means that you could be getting 15% cryo damage bonus to your charge shot and 15% cryo bonus to your AoE and you're getting it to your kit as well. Now the four piece set I think is what people are going to be confused about because when a character attacks an opponent affected by cryo the crit rate's increased and crit rate people like to say is not that important on bow users. I beg to differ um, but only in certain instances right. If you're running amber a crit rate build is not that important specifically because amber is just going for charge shots on weak points and you can run crit rate on her for her abilities but most likely you're not going to be doing that as much as you are just going to be running like energy recharge power damage etc. But I think what's important to note about Ganyu you is it seems like the charge shot and the ice aoe that happen after are going to be separate entities which means that you could crit with a precise hit on a weak point but you could also get crit on the damage that happens after in the aoe and if that is separate from the charge shot and it, the charge shot has no influence over whether or not it does crit then crit rate is actually more valuable than we thought with just the sheer amount of cryo damage that ganyu is able to put out in such a short amount of time it looks like it's going to be very valuable for you to get those cryo procs on people and get that additional crit rate just because you'll be able to hit more ice aoe crits which i think is going to be a big part of her kit and additionally we are going to see a lot more hydro characters played because freeze comps are coming out now now that blizzard strayer is out and the hydro set is out it does seem like a lot of new compositions are coming out where freeze is important so we could see a lot more of that which means even more crit rate now wanderer's troop is another one that a lot of people are talking about just for archer characters in general because it does give you the 35 percent charged attack damage and that is very good but we 
can only assume that it's going to hit the first shot. We don't know if that's going to affect the AoE that happens after. And for that reason, I do think that Blizzard Strayer might be slightly better than Wonder is True. Getting a 35% charged attack damage increase is going to increase your normal shots that you hit on their heads right before the AoE comes out. But the AoE is going to do less damage, uh, specifically because you don't have that bonus to cryo damage that would come out after. So I think for that reason, like if we are able to assume that the charge shot does not affect the damage of the AoE that happens after, then Wonder Troop is going to be bad. That being said, if the AoE bases itself off of the charge shot damage initially, then Wanderer's Troop could be the go-to set for her. And it also allows for more use of melt comps just because of the elemental mastery increase. So overall, it does seem like a good set. I personally think that Blizzard Strayer is going to outdo it though. Now, for those of you who like shield comps, um, obviously there's been a lot of Geo characters that have come out recently, and these Geo characters give you a lot of opportunities to crystallize. Albedo specifically gives you so many shield shards if you're running elements that are not Geo outside of Albedo's field. And using Bolide is going to be very, very strong in all cases. Every single character is going to get a lot of benefit from Bolide if they are using normal charged attacks because 40% bonus is a lot of bonus. However, I do think it's worth noting that this is only 5% more damage than Wanderer's Troop. So if you are able to have constant shield up time, you will do 40% more damage on your charged attack, which is cool. Um, and you get the normal attack damage as well. But I don't think we're going to see physical damage Ganyu being like a big build specifically because how much cryo damage that she's able to put out. I think it would maybe be a waste to go ahead and build her physical after all of that is said and done. So for that reason, I do think Bolide can kind of fit the same niche that Wanderer's Troop does, but I, I do think that Blizzard Strayer is going to outdo both of them, and I think that you may have some wasted efforts with the normal attack buff. All right, so Heart of the Depths. This is a set that a lot of people are talking about running on different characters that are not Hydro, specifically because the four-piece set actually seems very, very strong. After using an elemental skill, it increases normal attack and charged attack damage by 30%. To me, I don't think this is going to be worth it on Ganyu, specifically because um, it is less damage than something like Bolide, which I think you can actually have more up time on because it increases only for 15 seconds or so and depending on how long the skill cooldown is which we don't really know without the help of leaks or anything we may not see a lot of uptime for this ability that being said even with a lot of uptime for this ability it suffers the same problem as bolide does where it, it increases normal and charged attack damage but it won't affect the ice aoe or any of the abilities that happen outside of that but i can still see it being very strong because of the charged attack buff the one thing to note is that the two piece set is useless if you are building the four piece set you're only getting that one effect and you're not necessarily getting the two piece bonus that you would want. Now I wonder about a physical damage build. We know that Fischl can be built physical damage. If that was the case, then Bloodstains might be good. But like we were just talking about, I do feel like physical damage isn't going to be the focus of her kit just because she has so much cryo to output. But we we will see. My best guess is that her ascension stat is going to be either like cryo damage, elemental mastery, or energy recharge. I don't imagine they would build physical damage on her. That would be kind of a waste and put her in a state where she would be less useful. But if it is crit damage or something like that, we can assume that it's not out of the question to build Bloodstained. I just don't think it's going to be very strong. But Noblesse is going to be a very good set for her if she ends up being run as kind of a burst support or burst DPS, specifically because her elemental burst damage is going to get increased. And I think that's really strong um, with an AOE as big as she has. If each icicle is getting a 20% damage increase and you're able to build that and that cryo damage, then she may actually just be an amazing burst support, especially if you're running something like a melt comp, because then you'll just be able to run, you know, D loop clear, whoever you're running that's pyro, maybe Shinyan even, and you'll be able to get constant melts as long as the enemies are in that field. And we don't know how long the field lasts, but it is worth noting. Of course, the gambler set's uh, gonna be okay. Oh, that's not even gambler. Of course, the gambler set's gonna be okay. Uh, increasing elemental skill damage by 20% is always gonna be good, but I do think that because it's a four star set, we may see it fall off a little bit in terms of damage with cryo, and we don't know how much her taunt is actually going to do in terms of damage, so we can't really tell if this one's good yet. Scholar has energy recharge, exile has energy recharge. If you're building burst support, you could run exile and scholar just for the 40% bonus energy recharge on the passive, but you could also just run energy recharge recharge on your artifacts and it would accomplish roughly the same thing you don't want to end up getting diminishing returns and berserker is not worth it because blizzard strayers out all right, and so we're on to weapons now. Uh, the first thing I want to note is that there's actually a lot of free-to-play options that I think are very viable for Ganyu, almost more than the pay-to-play options. So let's talk about those. First, let's just talk about like kind of in order. Um, so I was very fortunate uh, during my free rolls, I was able to get Skyward Harp and Amos Bow, which means that I will be able to compare these two bows directly when Ganyu comes out. If you want to see those comparisons, make sure to drop a sub down below so that we are able to come back for the next video that comes out that has to do with Ganyu that shows the damage comparisons for those bows. But anyways, I was able to get Amos Bow and Skyward Harp. So in the video that we were looking at, actually, it shows Ganyu using the Amos Bow, which I think is really interesting. It has attack percent, which means that it is going
going to scale all of your damage overall, and the passive increases normal and charged attack damage by 12%. This 12% charged attack damage is going to be very helpful if you build her as kind of like a charged attack bot, which I think is what she might end up actually playing as, which would be really cool because it'd be a bow character we actually use the bow for. But the normal and charged attack damage increases by 8% every 0.1 seconds for up to five times, and that's actually worded really poorly. What that means is that it's going to increase by 8% every 0.1 seconds that the arrow is in the air traveling up to five times, so you can get up to 40% bonus damage if your arrow is traveling fairly far for over half a second. And that's really strong, again, if she is a charge attack bot, that's going to be really great, uh, but it's not going to affect the cryo AoE if we're following the same criteria as earlier, where it doesn't it isn't affected by normal charge attacks. So we will have to see how that works out. If it turns out that the ice AoE is affected by normal charge attacks, we could see Wanderer's Troop being very good, and we could see Amos Bow being very good as well. I actually think though that because she has the ice AoE that could potentially crit after her normal charged attack, I think that Skyward Harp could be really strong as well, just because you're gonna get that crit rate and that passive crit damage, and you get another AoE on top of your initial cryo AoE due to the passive Skyward Harp. So I think for that reason, we can assume that Skyward Harp is actually gonna be very strong on her as well. If you have either of these bows, I would imagine they're both very good. Stringless is my baby. I love Stringless. I think that Stringless is going to be very strong on her as well. If you're able to get that Ice AoE out with the 30% more elemental burst damage, if we're assuming that it affects every single Cryo Icicle that falls, then we can assume that Stringless is going to be very strong. Um, I don't know how strong her elemental skill is, her taunt, but if that ends up being strong as well, then Stringless is a totally viable option for her. Viridescent Hunt's just a good bow overall. I think this bow works great on currently everyone in the game. I think it's a little less efficient on Amber, but definitely not a waste either way. Favonius Warbow is going to be very strong if you're building her as a burst support, and I can't wait to see if that ends up being what she is, or if she's more of a charged attack bot, but I do think if she does end up being a burst support, or you build her as a burst support, energy recharge is going to be really great, and if she's able to constantly have that field out that is that Icicle Rain, you're going to have some really great um, interactions with other characters. And because the charged attack is so important to her kit, the passive for this bow matters. So the compound bow does physical damage, which I've kind of advised against building just because we're assuming she's going to do a lot of cryo damage. But in the case where you do have to go with a physical damage build, this could actually be useful just because normal and charged attack damage is going to increase your attack, which means that if you do hit him with a good old charged attack, uh, you will also get more attack bonus. And then you can hit him with a charged attack and then you can just start spamming him with your autos and it's going to do some damage. I do think prototype crescent is going to be the superior free to play item just because it gives you attack percent bonus, which I think is really strong for a character that scales all sorts of damage it's going to give her better physical better cryo and it's so easy to proc all you have to do is hit a charged attack which uh or sorry a charged attack on a weak point um which is going to be very strong with ganyu because obviously you want to use charged attack on her already Moving into three star bows, Raven bow is kind of useless um, unless you're using melt, but I don't think Raven bow is good. Using crit damage on messenger is going to be really good. Charged attack hits are going to do an extra 100% attack damage as crit damage, so I think messenger can actually be a really strong bow for her, assuming that you're going to be spamming, you know, charged attacks and stuff. Slingshot is going to be okay. I think Slingshot suffers from the same problem that Rust does, where if you are using charged attacks, you actually have fall off. Um, whereas if you're using normal attacks, you're gonna do a lot more damage. So if a normal charged attack hits a target within 0.3 seconds of being fired, increases the damage by 60%, otherwise it decreases damage by 10%. So if you're using charged attacks, this can actually fall off. But if you're building like a physical damage or an auto attack build, like it could be useful. I just don't think it's going to be the best. Same with Rust. Rust increases normal attacks, but I, I don't necessarily think that that's going to be helpful on her in comparison to building charged attack on her where she has the ice AoE. Recurve bow has HP, enough said. Sharpshooter's Oath increases damage against weak spots. If you have a refinement five, that's a 48% damage increase and it has crit damage up. So this is a massive increase in damage for three star free to play. I think if you're using a free to play bow, I think this is a great one to go with. But ultimately, those are just my thoughts uh, and speculations on Ganyu. Um, we don't know how good she's actually going to be. Um, I'm just assuming she's going to be a great unit based on the trailer that they showed. I'm really excited to see the utility that our kit has to offer and the damage she's able to output. So that's my two cents on everything. If you've enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like or a rating in general down below. Um, and of course, if you have something to add to the conversation, feel free to drop a comment. If you like Genshin Impact content and you want to see more Ganyu stuff, make sure to subscribe down below. I'm going to be talking more about Ganyu when she's released and when we learn more information about her because I'm very excited for this unit. And of course, as always, have a good one, everyone.